revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servants what must soon take place. He made it known by sending his angel to his servant, John, who testified to the word of God and to the testimony of Jesus Christ, even to all that he saw. Blessed is the one who reads aloud the words of the prophecy, and blessed are those who hear and who keep what is written in it, for the time is near. Does the Bible give us any indication of what might be happening? Most people encounter the book of Revelation first through second hand, gossip about the end of the world, world wars, impending cataclysms, these sorts of things. You think this is what the book is about. It's about the future. It's about what's coming. Cars will be empty beside the streets. The motors are running. You want to be in the rapture. You don't want to be left behind. Because the Bible is very clear. At the rapture, again, man, we get sucked up off this earth. We meet the Lord in the clouds. Shortly after that, bang! God's wrath is going to be poured out on this planet for seven years nonstop. You don't want to be here. We're gone! We're gone! We're gone! We're not coming back! I found Revelation compelling because none of these categories or frames for reading the text were um, satisfying to me, and I wanted to try to understand it on its own terms. To see how it all worked, I wanted to take it apart and try to put it back together. And make sense of it for the world that we're living in. Ew. 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 Touch don't squeeze him too hard. Sit him in on there. Somewhere. I'm not. Or he's happy. Okay. Ew. Good. Nice one. All right. I agree, John. It's like it's so Why did you go up there? I didn't grow up in church. My mom comes from a Catholic family, but we never did any of these things. My dad was diagnosed with early onset Parkinson's disease when he was 40, and our lives changed radically. And I had friends in the neighborhood who went to uh, uh, a local church that met at the elementary school up the road. And I kind of tagged along and became part of this community. And I came to this sort of by accident. I went to a Christian liberal arts undergraduate university because that's where my girlfriend in high school was going. But the courses there changed my outlook on things, taking Greek and Hebrew, learning the languages, learning how the literature works, sparked my imagination. Many biblical scholars view the New Testament as an ethereal ancient text that exists in this perfect form that we can reconstruct and then interpret. But scripture for me is a much more complex phenomenon. It encompasses human engagement with sacred traditions, with God, with one another. It's transmitted from the first century all the way down to where we are today and nothing comes through unscathed. It's something that transcends individual human experience and pulls us into a, a community of people from the past that we don't know. And because of its complexity, I conceptualize my work as shedding a small sliver of light on this big conglomeration of things that we call scripture. I was working on a project uh, that was making a new critical edition of the book of Revelation. And my job was just to sit all day, every day and transcribe manuscripts. Uh, so that we can create a new edition. Just copy Greek text into a box on a screen and just do this all day. But as you're doing that, you're reading the manuscripts, I'm seeing all sorts of things that I, did, I don't know what they are. Chapter headings, um, marginal notes, 
commentary extracts, prayers in the margin, tables of contents, a whole range of things that I had never thought existed before. And so begin to investigate these sort of overlooked, forgotten paratextual traditions and how they've influenced the way that people have read Revelation. And they range from commentary from an archbishop in Caesarea from the early 7th century, Andrew, which is really dominant, to comments on the number of the beast, identifying the beast as the Pope or Muhammad or particular Ottoman emperors. And so without necessarily changing the text, Paratext changed the frame a reader brings to the book of Revelation, and I found a depth of significance and complexity and contradiction in the book that spoke to me, and that sort of sparked my path forward. The Book of Revelation is a place that you go when you want to learn about the doctrine of the end times, about the impending return of Christ and the end of the world and the recreation of the world and the New Jerusalem and these sorts of things. But in reality, it's not about eschatology. The Book of Revelation is about a group of communities in now Western Turkey in the first century negotiating the quotidian realities of everyday life uh, in the Roman system, which the author of the book of Revelation sees as animated by Satan. And the answer for the author of the book of Revelation is to leave this system that is unjust, built on slave labor, polytheistic, a system that the author of Revelation thinks is inherently evil. It makes me think about the unjust systems that are in our world today. For me, this is what Revelation is about. Sorry, makes, this is the, this is the, uh, get a little emotional about this, about this part. So for me, as a Revela the only thing that's the future about Revelation is the New Jerusalem, chapters 21 and 22. And it's John's response to this oppressive system. And this is what it looks like. And it's not all good, but it's something just for John. Revelation is hopeful in the sense that the unjust systems of our world will pass away. And so it gives us space to rethink what a just system would look like in our world, to begin to imagine that. For me, there's two ways that progress in theology can occur. One is rediscovering all the evidence that's central to what we've been doing that's been left behind. And for me, that's the manuscripts. There are thousands and thousands of pages that people have looked at and thought unimportant that actually might have something that's of value. The second way that we can make progress is to experiment, to be imaginative in the collaborations we create collaboration between theology and the sciences is foundational because what we learn about the natural world should correspond to what we learn about God through these sacred traditions. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them. They will be his peoples. And God will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. For the first things have passed away. 